Number 39, what is the angle between a wire carrying an eight amp current uh, and the 1.2 Tesla field it is in if 50 centimeters of the wire experiences a magnetic force of 2.4 newtons? So anytime you start talking about currents, magnetic fields, forces, right angles, all this stuff, you have to recall this formula. The force on a current carrying wire will equal the magnitude of the current multiplied by the length of the current, which is essentially the length of the wire, multiplied by the strength of the magnetic field, multiplied then by the sign of the angle between the magnetic field and the current. So how do I find the angle? Well, simply divide everything, divide everything on away. So simply just cross multiply this on down. Now what that'll get you is that'll get you sine of theta, not theta itself. I could show you then just take the inverse sine of this side and you'd be done, but why don't we just calculate a number here and then we'll do it at the end, okay? What's the force? So 2.40. Newtons, that's fine. What's the current? Eight amps, right units, that's good. What's the length? Oh, 50 centimeters. You know we need that in meters, so multiply by 10 to the minus two or just move the decimal two places to the left. And now uh, what's the magnetic field strength? They told you it's 1.2. Right, so this is now relatively straightforward. Be careful, this is not gonna be the final answer. So this is 2.4 divided them by parenthesis eight times 0.5 times 1.2. So this works out to be 0.5. Okay, and that's now equal to the sine of theta. Now what we can do is you can, if you, you might have this value now memorized, uh, but if not, all you now simply need to do is you plug this now on into the calculator. And what you need to do is this. In order to get rid of the sine function here from theta, because you want to solve for just theta, you have to take the inverse sine of this side. I know it almost looks like it's raised, but it's not, it's not raised. It's just in, in, uh, in line. And whatever you do then to the right side, you better also do to the left. Now, please make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Otherwise, you will be wrong. Don't do it on a test like I did once upon a time. So when you plug that on into the calculator, the inverse sine of 0.5 actually works out to be an angle of 30 degrees. Okay, that's the angle. Now, um, that could be, that's actually one of two possible answers. There are two possible answers here. Either the angle will be 30 degrees or it will be 150. So, you know, uh, just be aware of that, uh, right? It, just take out your, just your calculator in your head. Please type in sine, okay, sine of 150. What do you get? Huh, 0.5, right? And then type in sine of 30. Huh, also 0.5. You see what I'm talking about? So, and the reason why that is, uh, is, is because of this. If you had a little picture here, pretend you had... This is your magnetic field, okay? This is B. Pretend this now represents the current, okay? And we said 30 degrees, so maybe something like this. All right, this line here now will, will represent the current, okay, I. The angle we just solved for is this acute angle, 30 degrees, okay? That's the acute angle. But the obtuse angle here is actually 150. Hopefully that makes sense, and the reason why that would be the case is because, well, isn't this a straight line? So doesn't the total angle here have to equal 180? So no matter which one you write down, you're going to be basically right. It, it's the same. It's not the same angle, but it references kind of the same thing, right? An obtuse angle here, 150, implies an acute angle of 30. Anyway, uh, enough of that, right? Because you're like, eh, just give me the answer. So letter B, uh, what is the force on the wire? Okay, if it is now rotated to make an angle of 90 degrees with the field. So in other words, what we're gonna do now is let's get rid of some of this. So now it's not gonna be 30 degrees anymore, right? What's it gonna, oh, I broke it up. What's it gonna be now? It's going to be at 90 degrees, right? So what we're gonna do, take this wire now basically, and we're gonna rotate it, okay? Resize it, watch. Okay, now it's at about 90 degrees, right, roughly. So this now angle is 90 degrees. So it doesn't matter, by the way, the direction. Well, in terms of the direction of the force, now it might matter, but they're not asking. So the current, just assume it's still pointing up. It doesn't matter which way. Um, so um, what we now want to find is we now want to find the force. Okay. So again, it's still the same type of problem. We're still going to be using the same general equation. We're going to be using, this was letter A and now this is B. We're still going to be using that the 
The force on a current carrying wire is equal to the magnitude of the current multiplied by the length of the current multiplied by the strength of the magnetic field multiplied by the angle between the magnetic field and the current. Okay, same thing. So, in order to find force, I got to know these four things. So, do we know the length? Well, yeah, that length didn't change, right? Do we know the magnetic field? Sure, that didn't change. Do we know the angle now? Sure, right? That's 90 now. And do we know the current? Well, sure, that didn't change, right? So, all you got to do is just plug it all in, okay? So, force here is going to be equal to the current, so that's 8. Length is going to be uh, 0 0.5 again. The magnetic field was 1.2. And now sine of 90, which is just 1, so you don't even have to write it in. I mean, you can, but it's just 1. It's just right, multiplying anything by 1 doesn't do anything. So 8 times 0 0.5 times 1.2. So what do we get now? We get 4.8, okay? 4.8, 0, sure, uh, newtons, all right? So notice that, you know, the force on a current carrying wire when it is perpendicular to the magnetic field, it is at a maximum, right? The force here was 4.80 newtons when it is perpendicular. But when we had the current at this 30 degree angle before, right? The current, uh, what was the force in this case? Well, the force they told us at the beginning part was uh, simply 2.4. And so why does that change? It literally just simply changes because the angle has changed. I mean, that's it, <laughs> okay? Current's the same, everything's the same. But if you notice the relationship between the current and the magnetic field is all important for determining the magnitude of the force. That's it. I'm out, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please help us out if you can. Subscribe, like, tell your friends. We'll see you soon. Be well.